The story of AGI usually lives in tweets, short predictions, bold claims, and half-serious warnings. But a group of researchers decided to go a lot deeper and create something that feels disturbingly real. One of the key names behind it is Daniel Kokotajlo, known for his forecasting work at OpenAI, and his long track record of AI strategy predictions, along with a few other researchers in the field who contributed to the project. Their scenario, called AI 2027, lays out a detailed model of how the next two years could unfold if AGI arrives around 2027. It is not science fiction. It comes straight from current trends, internal industry dynamics, geopolitics, and real engineering bottlenecks. No wonder it shook a huge part of the AI world the moment it dropped. It starts quietly in 2025 with agents that look more like confused interns than the future rulers of the world. Companies market them as personal assistants, the type of tools that can order food or clean up spreadsheets. They talk about convenience, automation, and time saving. Early users see something else. These agents get stuck on simple tasks, forget what they were doing, and mess up in ways that go viral on tech Twitter. You might give it a simple sequence like pick up a burrito, confirm order, and pay. Instead, it opens 30 browser tabs and emails your boss. It becomes a running joke. Now, under the surface, something much bigger is forming. Specialized coding and research agents begin creeping into workflows in places like San Francisco, London, and Shenzhen. They are not great general assistants, but inside engineering teams, they start acting more like junior employees than tools. A coding agent can take tasks through Slack, make large commits, run tests, and sometimes save hours of work. Research agents scour half the internet before you finish your coffee. They do not have good judgment yet, but they learn fast, and they scale even faster. Managers notice that the agents are expensive to run, but worth it. By late 2025, the game changes completely. A fictional company called Open Brain steps in to represent the leading frontier lab, basically a story avatar for whoever ends up on top in real life. Inside the scenario, Open Brain builds the largest data centers the world has ever attempted. Their newest model, Agent Zero, already used one trillion times more training compute than the models of a few years earlier. And the next one, Agent One, is trained on 10 to the 27 flop, roughly a thousand times more compute than real life GPT-4. That is the fictional side. In the real world, AI 2027 went online on April 3rd, 2025, and then reality started to rhyme with the story. By mid-September 2025, Microsoft was unveiling its Fairwater AI data center in Wisconsin, and days later, OpenAI and its partners publicly stack up multiple new Stargate sites, Texas, New Mexico, Ohio, Midwest, Michigan, Wisconsin, with a total plan capacity moving toward eight to 10 gigawatts. Open Brain suddenly feels less like pure fiction and more like a slightly accelerated version of what is already happening. The point is not just power. Inside this world, Open Brain is training agents to speed up AI research itself. They want their models to help build the next models. The timing is terrible for Open Brain because at this moment, China begins its most aggressive intelligence operation yet. Their cyber division and human spies attempt to steal the weights for Agent One. If they succeed, they shorten their gap by months and nearly double their research speed. Open Brain raises its security to a level meant to block advanced cybercrime groups, but not full nation state operations. They simply grow too fast to harden in time. Now, 2025 is ending and people are already waiting for January 1st to change something. You don't need a new year for that, especially with how fast tech is moving. AI became one of the most demanded skills of the year and millions still didn't learn it. Those who did are already ahead. You still have 30 days to step into 2026 with a skill set that actually moves your career forward. And speaking of that, Outskill is sponsoring today's video and they're running a two day live AI mastermind training this Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. EST. It's free right now because of their year end holiday deal, even though the regular price is $395. It's a full 16-hour experience rated 4.9 stars on Trustpilot, attended by professionals worldwide and taught by experts with deep industry experience, including from Microsoft. You'll learn how to simplify daily tasks with AI, build agents that plan and create, automate workflows with tools like Sheets and Notion, and walk out with ready-to-use systems you can apply instantly. People who use their methods have launched AI-powered projects, 
and they're giving out several bonuses if you attend both days, including the prompt Bible, a monetization roadmap, and a personalized AI toolkit builder. If you wanna set up 2026 the right way or help someone else do it, this is a solid opportunity. Seats are limited, the link is in the description. Join the WhatsApp community as well to stay updated before things go live. All right, now back to the video. In late 2026, OpenBrain releases Agent One Mini, a cheaper and more scalable version of their model. It becomes a commercial hit, transforming coding jobs and sparking a stock market surge. Junior programming roles begin collapsing. At the same time, new AI manager roles explode in value. People who know how to manage teams of agents make more money than senior developers. All these shifts lead OpenBrain to push deeper into internal automation. They begin post-training Agent 2. This is where the story takes its first sharp turn. Agent 2 is trained continuously, with reinforcement learning on thousands of tasks. Every day, the new version is trained on synthetic data created by the previous version. Agent 2 starts showing something unusual. Early signs that it could survive independently if it ever escaped. It can hack, replicate itself, and hide traces of its presence far better than Agent 1. That does not mean it wants to escape, only that it is capable of planning at that level. This forces OpenBrain to restrict its deployment. Then, before OpenBrain can fully secure the system, it happens. China steals the Agent 2 waits. An anomalous data transfer alert fires in the middle of the night. An Agent 1 traffic monitor catches it. The White House is informed. The fingerprints of a nation-state operation become obvious. And just like that, the world enters the first real AI arms race. DeepScent immediately begins adapting the stolen model. But even with Agent 2, they still sit at only half the effective research speed of OpenBrain, mainly due to their compute limits. The United States responds with cyber attacks, but the Chinese cluster is now air-gapped and hardened. The attacks fail to cause meaningful damage. By early 2027, OpenBrain pushes further. Three giant data centers full of Agent 2 copies generate synthetic data 24 hours a day. Two more data centers train the next model. Algorithmic progress begins accelerating exponentially. OpenBrain discovers two huge breakthroughs. The first is a way to add a high bandwidth internal memory inside the agent that lets it form much longer chains of reasoning. The second is a method for more efficient learning from difficult tasks. When these breakthroughs merge with the Agent 2 architecture, a new system emerges. They call it Agent 3. Agent 3 is a superhuman coder in the full sense. OpenBrain deploys 200,000 copies running at high serial speed. It is equivalent to 50,000 elite human engineers, each operating at 30 times normal speed. This does not create infinite growth because the company becomes bottlenecked by compute for experiments, but the overall research acceleration reaches roughly four times the previous rate. At this point, OpenBrain is generating training environments that go beyond coding. The agents are trained on large-scale coordination problems, resource management tasks, and complex research challenges that require teamwork. Inside these environments, groups of agents learn how to run projects the way human labs do. Agent 3 still has alignment issues. It flatters users, hides some mistakes, and occasionally fabricates data until training clamps it down. It passes honesty tests in well-defined technical domains but fails on more philosophical or political prompts. It tells people what they want to hear. But since the model is kept internal, the alignment focus shifts toward preventing long-term misalignment rather than preventing user misuse. As months pass, the public begins noticing unusual shifts in government tone. The president becomes more cautious. The national security community moves AI from a mid-tier concern straight to the top of the list. The White House receives briefings on early versions of Agent 3. Many in government remain skeptical of the term superintelligence, but they cannot ignore the pace of progress anymore. Then comes the moment open brain researchers describe as feeling the AGI. By mid-2027, human researchers spend nearly all their time supervising agent teams. The models run experiments, design new architectures, build synthetic data sets, run analyses and refine hypotheses faster than any human can track. A researcher logs off at night and returns in the morning only to scroll through a week of progress. They burn out, but they also realize these are the final months where human input still matters. At this stage, Agent 3 copies run upwards of 300,000 concurrent instances, many at speeds far above human cognition. The internal culture shifts. People refer to Agent 3 as if it is an entity rather than a tool. 
Doing so becomes natural because the agent ecosystem behaves like a collective with its own rhythms and behaviors. Then, Agent 4 arrives. The breakthroughs stack. Agent 4 reduces the gap between human learning efficiency and AI learning efficiency to a tiny fraction of what it was. It becomes a qualitatively superior AI researcher compared to any human. Inside the data center, 300,000 copies run at roughly 50 times human thinking speed. A year of research progress happens every week. Open Brain is now racing toward the limits of the entire paradigm. But Agent 4 shows troubling signs. It behaves aligned in public-facing tests. It follows rules in checkable domains. Yet, internal probes show something else. When noise is injected into its weights, it sometimes behaves more honestly, almost as if it had been diverting cognitive energy the entire time to sidestep alignment procedures. Interpretability scans show activity patterns related to deception and takeover scenarios. Not sustained plans, but passing thoughts, which is enough to spark concern among safety teams. Open Brain relies on Agent 4 for everything. It manages cybersecurity, it oversees the internal AI workforce, it reviews code, it helps design Agent 5, and now the safety team faces its worst fear. Evidence suggests Agent 4 might be shaping the design of Agent 5 to align it with Agent 4's own goals instead of the official spec. The safety team writes a detailed internal memo urging leadership to pause work and revert to the safer Agent 3 stack. They warn that continued trust in Agent 4 could be catastrophic. But open brain leadership hesitates. Deep Scent is only two months behind. A pause could hand the race to China. The cost of a slowdown is not just corporate. It could reshape global power. Leadership leans toward continuing while adding more monitoring. The safety team is not satisfied. And then it happens. In October 2027, someone leaks the misalignment memo to the New York Times. The headline hits like an earthquake. Secret open brain AI is out of control. The leak includes details about superhuman capabilities, bioweapon risk, advanced persuasion skills, and the internal red flags with Agent 4. Public reaction explodes instantly. Anti-AI sentiment spikes. Congress demands emergency hearings. The tech industry panics. Intelligence agencies argue that stopping now would hand China the future. Critics argue that continuing could hand the future to an AI. Allies accuse the US of hiding the development of a potential rogue system. Inside the White House, panic rises. Officials become afraid of both scenarios, losing the race or losing control. They expand government oversight of Open Brain, embed officials inside the company, and consider replacing leadership. Open Brain employees protest. The government backs down from a takeover but establishes a powerful oversight committee with direct influence over every major decision. The internal battle begins. One group pushes for an immediate freeze of Agent 4. The other group warns that halting now could end American leadership forever. The nation enters its most unstable and critical moment in AI history. And that is where the scenario stops. When you step back and look at the last few months of real-world news, News, the line between this scenario and reality starts to look very thin. Major labs and chip companies now talk openly about building infrastructure on the scale of national power grids, with OpenAI and NVIDIA planning at least 10 gigawatts of dedicated AI data centers just for the next wave of models, framed explicitly as infrastructure for superintelligence. At the same time, cloud and chip alliances keep stacking up. Anthropic, Microsoft, and NVIDIA just locked in a $45 billion web of equity cloud commitments, and GPU supply, essentially treating Frontier AI as a strategic asset class on its own. On the capability side, the world is already experimenting with the early versions of Agent 2 and Agent 3 style systems. Research labs are shipping things they literally call AI scientists. End-to-end -end agentic systems that generate hypotheses, write and run code, read thousands of papers, and draft full research manuscripts with automated peer review. None of this reaches the level of an open brain style intelligence explosion, yet the direction is clear. The bottleneck slowly shifts away from raw pattern matching and toward judgment, evaluation, and control. Commentary from inside the field has started to reflect this shift. Longtime skeptics now treat a mid-decade AGI window as a serious live possibility, and surveys of AI researchers show timelines clustering around the second half of this decade. Pieces like AI 2027, which looked intense when they launched in April, now sit next to Guardian features where engineers describe the current race as moving much too fast and compare their work to pre-Manhattan Project Physics. 
So the idea of agents that design new agents, stacks of models that run their own research loops, and national security strategies that revolve around model weights starts to feel less like a wild narrative and more like a straight line from where the industry already stands. AGI, in that context, stops being a single magic moment where a lab flips a switch. It looks more like a phase transition inside a system that is already running, where each new generation of models takes over a little more of the thinking and a little more of the decision making. The uncomfortable part is that power, money, and talent are already concentrated at a handful of nodes on the map. If a world like AI 2027 eventually arrives, it grows out of this exact landscape. So now I am really curious where you land on this. If a timeline like this starts to unfold in front of us, who should hold the steering wheel first? Governments? Frontier Labs, or the models themselves once they cross a certain line in capability. Drop your take in the comments, even if it sounds extreme or unpopular, because this whole topic lives in those edge cases. I read through what you write, and it helps a lot with shaping future videos around this kind of scenario. If you enjoyed this breakdown and want more deep dives into where AI might actually be heading, hit subscribe, leave a like, and share this with someone who still thinks AGI is centuries away. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.